Hey everyone, it's Friday, September 6th, let's talk PlayStation. Okay, so let's talk about Shuhei Yoshida. He's basically on this show every week now. Every week he confirms something new on Twitter to a person asking a question in, in regards to PS4, and Shuhei just happens to finally answer some of them, so now we know more about the PS4. One being is you can install games completely onto the PS4, specifically disc-based games, so you can install the entire game onto the PS4. Now, granted, that means you don't need to... That you still need the disc, the disc needs to be in the system for verification, but the reason why you would fully install a game onto the hard drive is so that it runs faster and uh, you know the PS4 can access it easier and it doesn't have the disc spinning constantly. This is something the Xbox 360 actually does currently. If you you know have a 360, you know what I'm talking about. It's actually a really cool feature, really nice. It's good to see it, that PS4 is going to have it. On the flip side of that though, Shuhei confirmed that you can't install games onto an external hard drive. So it has to be on the PS4's main hard drive right now. It's 500 gigs. Uh, it's going to be upgradable. We already know that. So you know if you're the kind of person that's going to be installed your games left and right for all those easy accesses and stuff like that then you can obviously increase your hard drive but you know more options is always good uh, maybe hopefully they'll you know allow external hard drives in the future one interesting thing that Shuhei confirmed this week is how many ps4 controllers are supported at once on the ps4 which four max is out at four controllers simultaneously connected to a ps4 which this is interesting because actually the ps3 if you did not know actually supports up to seven controllers and games do support that. So, uh, very few games mind you i believe one of the rock bands uh support it with all the extra instruments uh, i believe fifa supports that nba supports uh some of the nba games support it games that obviously would really take advantage of all those players and uh yeah but it's something that's not widely used but ps4 is going to keep it down to just four controllers which i don't think is a huge impact because again i don't really think i never i never used it i know obviously people have used it but it's certainly in that sort of minority aspect as to why sony would possibly lower the number but doesn't affect me i'm fine with that maybe it might affect a few amount of people out there but four controllers max so don't just go pre-ordering six extra DualShock 4s because you don't need them. This next news story is in regards to Drive Club. Drive Club PS Plus Edition. Uh, when we all get our PS4s on day one, if you want to play online, you do have to get PlayStation Plus. I'm going to assume most people are going to do that and have PlayStation Plus for their PS4. Obviously, some people are wondering, well, this Drive Club PlayStation Plus Edition just sounds like a really watered-down version of the game, and Evolution Studios is confirming that the only thing missing from the game is a few cars and a few tracks, which they've said previously, but one thing they've also uh, you know, confirmed straight up is that you can even earn the Platinum Trophy in the PlayStation Plus Edition. So you really are getting uh, the full package. Nothing is and not to the extent of so much content is being taken away from it, so there's enough there to certainly earn all the trophies and, you know, play the game and enjoy it you know and that's cool it's not like they're putting something out there with only two tracks and two cars and no modes or something like that they are giving you a pretty sizable bulk of the game although they have not com confirmed how many cars are missing from the game or how many tracks are missing from the game they don't have any of those totals out there as to what's inside the game but the way that they're obviously wording it, it seems like not much is being taken out but of course we'll we'll have to see day one when we all get our ps4s because either way you're going to have something to play Free-to-play games, Drive Club, and Resogun are all, you know, pretty much there waiting for you with PlayStation Plus or without PlayStation Plus with um, with those MMOs. So. so let's talk about Gaikai, the streaming service that Sony bought a long time ago and is now being touted for the PS4 and even Vita. Uh, you know, we don't know, like, a whole lot about it. Sony's talking a little bit more about it. Obviously, they're not keen on saying so many details, but they kind of, they kind of this week, have outlined their plans with what they want to do with Gaikai. One being, and what we've heard before, is they want to make PlayStation 3 games streamable to the PlayStation 4. That is their first priority with Gaikai streaming. Secondly, they want to move PS3 streaming, stream PS3 games to the Vita. So they want to stream PlayStation 3 games to the PS4 first, then to the Vita, and then thirdly, they want to stream PS3 games to the PS3. So even PS3 users can take advantage of Gaikai, Gaikai technology. And uh, it's also worth noting that, you know, in other interviews and other things of that sort they have said legacy playstation titles so that would also assume or hint at the ps1 ps2 possibly psp uh, things to that regard which would make sense because they do have this whole legacy of titles that are under their banner and under their name and you know things that they own so interesting and obviously one thing they did touch on is uh you know location you know they are still aiming for america 2014 and they did touch on europe being sort of an issue right now because you, you know europe has uh, some broadband issues and it's going to require a hefty amount of internet to make Gai gaikai work streaming playstation 3 games so that's why they really aren't uh, talking about Europe much because they really, you know, there's sort of that issue there. But SCEE CEO and President uh, Jim Ryan is saying like they are definitely going to 
get the service rolled out in Europe. They just don't really have a, a, a time frame as to when. So here's one thing that's really interesting that not a whole lot of people talked about this week. Sony has formed a new uh, third party relations team and what this team is going to do is help get games to PlayStation. Gio Corsi, I hope I'm saying that guy's name right, uh, is the director of Sony's third party relations team and what he's going to be doing and what this team's going to be doing is building relationship, relationships throughout this industry and get other uh, outside IPs onto PlayStation. Specifically, their first project that they're taking on is Borderlands 2 for the PlayStation Vita. That was a huge thing. Oh, Border Borderlands 2 is coming to Vita. That's awesome. And the thing about that was is that everybody demanded it. Uh, this was uh, something that Greg Miller and Colin Moriarty and IGN kind of kind of fixed up with Randy Pitchford at Gearbox and they kind of worked together and they you know all these tweets were getting sent out to people saying we want Borderlands 2 on Vita we want it on Vita and it, this is what what came about it the game happened so and this is the first project this is the what this team has formed and what they were what they're currently doing and they passed the development of Borderlands 2 on to the developer of Dive Kick I forgot their name but that's what this team's going to be doing now they're going to be you know they're, they're basically asking you right now, what do you want to see on PlayStation? Because this uh, third-party relations team is going to try and work that out and see if it can, they can make it happen. And this really is a strong push on Sony's front. Like, this is their team. Sony is actually publishing Borderlands 2 on Vita, and this is their, their, this is their push. Like, they want to hear from you what they want what you want on PlayStation. Uh, Gio Corsi even is on Twitter. He encourages you to tweet him what game you want and what PlayStation platforms you want it on. And he's like, you know, piling it up and all that. I think... I think what Sony has clearly demonstrated this specific upcoming generation and what they've learned from PS3 is that they're listening. They're totally listening to people this time, you know. They've been doing a lot of right things this, this upcoming generation with the PlayStation 4 and they're doing a really good job. And I think this team is really going to, you know, possibly listen to customers. I mean, because we are getting Borderlands 2. So I encourage anybody to go out there and tweet the guy, let him know, you know. So the big news story this week and the cover story for today's episode, virtual reality. There's a rumor going around, strong sources uh, by Eurogamer are saying that Sony is working on their own virtual reality headset for the PlayStation 4. Now, if you remember a couple weeks ago, we had a Let's Talk PlayStation where Sony actually had Oculus Rift development kits. Like they have Oculus Rift, they're playing with it and they're obviously testing it and using it and understanding it. But the, these new rumors are saying that Sony's basically building their own virtual rea reality headset set for the PlayStation 4. Now, obviously there's a whole mess of things we can talk about right here. Uh, virtual reality. Now, first of all, like, you know, virtual reality, virtual reality, specifically Oculus Rift is, uh, is making waves. People love it. People are very impressed with this technology. It's still a little bit far off. Oculus still has to make consumer versions, but you know, people are liking it and a lot of people are highly encouraged that this is the future of gaming and that's kind of where gaming's going. Uh, I, I certainly think there's a lot of strong evidence to that. So of course it just begs the question, you know, like what's Sony going to do? How are they going to do it? Uh, what are the possibilities here and all that? There's a lot to get into. Now one being that, you know, Sony has Oculus Rift development kits. Why aren't they just like using Oculus Rift? Why aren't they partnering with them? One thing is uh, the, uh, the uh, founder of Oculus Rift has actually said that they've apparently had offers and they don't want to get acquired, which would mean that, you know, <laughs> That so someone could buy the entire company and then make Oculus Rift exclusive to that company. I would assume Microsoft wants to make, uh, you know, not a purchase more so, but possibly relations with Oculus Rift. I know Sony has had talks with Oculus Rift. These, these, the thing about this is, these are big companies and they've had discussions with each other. They totally have behind the scenes and the public doesn't know about it, so we obviously don't know what's going on. But Oculus is saying they don't want to get bought. So, and the way Oculus is acting is that they want to be partnered with everybody. They are mostly focusing on PC right now. That's their thing. They want to get a consumer device out for PC, and that's cool. And uh, they said they would like to partner with consoles. They have a little bit, a couple of issues with it in terms of the technology and how it moves for forward and all that. But I think what it all boils down to is that Sony wants to do its own virtual reality heads, virtual reality headset. And that's so much to compete against the Oculus, Oculus Rift, because that's kind of I don't know. It's, to me, it seems like it's two different markets. PC and console can be tend to be very different markets. PC are very hardcore is a very hardcore audience of people that build PCs and go for the max settings and all that. And they're just they're really, they're really fine tuned to that community. They're just there's their their core group of people. Whereas consoles are not only gamers but a, a much more wider stretch of audience. Those are casual people and 
you know, people that aren't necessarily in tune to the video game industry as much as I am or you am, you are, you know. So to me, at least, if Sony does their own virtual reality headset for the PlayStation 4, I don't think it's necessarily competing with Oculus Rift. And I really hope that Sony would possibly even partner with Oculus Rift at some point. But of course, I now I sort of doubt that if they are going to do their own sort of hardware, which would make sense because Sony's a hardware company. In fact, they have virtual, virtual reality headsets. They do. They had the HMZT1 and HMZT2. I believe those are like the like product codes or whatever for the the thing but it's even in the picture actually it's been displayed this whole time that's sony's actual headset you can buy right now and you can use that for gaming although it's uh very different from what oculus is doing in terms of technology i believe this uses two screens and they're oled and I, like it's it goes into a whole bunch of technical prowess that i don't have off the top of my head just yet whereas oculus is doing something completely different where it needs a higher frames per second to display for each eye and all that it gets into a whole mess of technology talk um but one being is you know there's a lot of barriers to this as well with virtual reality in terms of you know cost and money this is a lot of investment and the thing about doing virtual virtual reality on console is that it might be too big of an investment for some people sony's current you know vr headsets that i'm talking about right now are i believe retail for 100 pound something crazy like that so or not a hundred a thousand excuse me no, no no it's not that cheap at all it's a thousand you can't afford that but you see what i'm saying like it's it's a lot of money and that's certainly not something that everyone everyone can just go out buy and try so it's like you know sony's got to keep the cost down with this vr headset but at the same time it's got to be good it's got to look good it's got to be a good experience and i'm sure a lot of even if a pc person's watching this right now they're going to tell you right off the bat it probably wouldn't even be close to the quality of oculus rift because of course PS4 is sort of that, it's a console, so it has a, a, a barrier of sorts, whereas PC has a, an empty sort of roof. It can go as high as it wants to in terms of the power of that specific machine. But I think what it really boils down to is that they're two different markets. That PC guy is going to, you know, build his tough rig and get his Oculus going and have beautiful whatevers, and the console market has to be treated a little bit differently in terms of affordability, ease of use. And, uh, you know, proper marketing, too. It's got to look cool for people. I think if Sony uh, did a virtual reality on PS4 and they built a proper headset and they built a proper price and it was actually pretty damn cool to use and it looked great, not mind-blowing compared to, like, Oculus Rift or something like that because I, I don't think they can just reach that level of quality in terms of affordability, but, you know, they're a hardware company. I think they could make something really cool. And I think the possibility is there for Sony to really uh, have that cool you know kind of that that we thing you know that that cool gimmick feature you know like oh you got to get a playstation 4 to check this out but in this sense it wouldn't be that much of a gimmick because virtual reality is kind of really where gaming is going it really is sort of a, a a groundbreaking movement that could push this industry forward but at least for casual consumers not only would it seem like a gimmick to buy into but it really would push the industry forward not like motion controls have been going because i honestly you know the wii emotes and playstation move and all that that's not pushing our industry forward quite frankly it's just not motion controls are you know we don't like them as gamers they're not good and not to like go off topic but that's one of the reasons why i really don't like what microsoft's doing with xbox one in terms of connect and building a more powerful camera and a more powerful connect because i just think there's a, a ceiling in terms of how uh you know groundbreaking it's going to be it's a camera pointing at you while you're playing a video game it's just no matter how good it tracks you, who who gives a shit? But yeah, there's like so many possibilities. And of course, Sony's going to experiment. They experiment all the time. They're a giant multi-conglomerate, billion publicly traded company, all that jazz. You know, they're going to they're gonna experiment. Who knows if we'll even ever get a VR headset for the PS4. But, you know, if we do, hopefully they do it right. And if they do do it right, we could possibly see something that pushes this industry forward, like with what Oculus is doing. Because it really is groundbreaking what they're doing. It's really cool stuff. You know, and if Sony's gonna do it too, they gotta they gotta do it well. You know, they gotta do it right. And they've been doing they've been doing a lot of things right with PS4. Can they keep it up? You know, that's something that always begs the question of will they? We don't know. That concludes this week's episode of Let's Talk PlayStation. I'm Ryan Panecki. Thank you so much for talking with me. I'll see you next Friday.